You know that's a fucking party. Let's get down. Just saw the scene and I are fucking party. Yeah, I do like pictures. Yeah. 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 That wasn't actually what I said, it was um, the original foundation feeling that we had when we was making the music. It wasn't for big rooms, it wasn't for festivals, it was for small dingy clubs with a big massive sound system. The shows were amazing, like I could never knock the shows. Like we was playing 20,000 people for stages at festivals. And I think it was just, it just wasn't exciting me anymore and it just got to the point where it was all about drops. But it, originally it wasn't, it was about, it was about a vibe and almost meditation almost at one point. That movement is still going. But I've kind of been there. We did it the first time round. We was we done that. We, we we did an important thing. We we built this sound. zoning out and listening to actually listening to what's going on rather than such impact and such testosterone fueled music where it kind of lost a lot of its groove and it was very every record started to sound similar to the last it was everything just started to sound the same and, and a little bit soulless we're, we're, we're all to blame as well like it's not anyone else's fault that our, other than our own but it's just we want to make people go crazy and that's what they was going crazy to Trancy breakdown. Big build up. Huge squealing drop. I fell into the trap of, of playing shows like that and it just, I got to the point where I had to play certain records and I was never about that. And it just, it got to the point where I felt like a robot, just playing records what everyone wanted to hear rather than sort of playing records that people hadn't heard, which is what I always used to do. When I used to play dub plates, I just used to play my own records, like brand new stuff no one had heard, and it got to the point where I found myself starting to play records that I didn't necessarily like. And that's just, that's when it, that's when it kind of becomes meaningless. Smuggling, Jedi coaching, <laughs> dark side coaching. I wasn't feeling really inspired anymore. My main thing is I'm a producer. And you need, you need to be constantly inspired by what's going on around you. And if it's not, you, you find it hard to be inspired. So I probably would have stopped making music because I would have just had a, had a writer's block. And that's what I kept finding more and more that I was getting writer's block a lot more. And I only used to get it once every two years, writer's block. It would be like a real horrible two weeks where I'd be like depressed because I couldn't make any music. He told me this morning that he's never seen Silence in Love. I had listened to so much different music and like couldn't play it out. Like, I couldn't play a disco record at a dubstep night. 
I'm very interested to see how my show goes today because obviously it's kind of my first. It's the first time I'm playing hard and not playing dubstep. So I'm a. Uh, I'm excited to see how it goes. I hate when you get the one guy at the front of the of the show who's screaming. You play dubstep. It's like, will you play this, 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 and this tonight? Like records are made in 2004, 2005. And it's like, well, no, because I didn't. I haven't played them since 2004, 2005. Why am I just going to play it tonight? You know I'm not going to play it, but it's like this is a new chapter. I'm like, come with me or fuck off. I hate these frat boy cups. They just remind me of American Pie. The records I've made are still there. The sets that have been recorded are still there. Like I'm not, I haven't taken it. It's not like I've taken every reminiscence, like every thing I've ever done away from everyone and been like, right, that's gone. I'm fully aware of what's like what I've done over the last sort of ten years. We created a movement. We created a genre, and I was a, I was part of the backbone of creating it. So I can't be mad at that because I'm proud of that. I'm, I'm still proud to this day of what we've done, you know. And it's still like. That influenced so many other genres and, and it still is. It is that thing again, I've done one genre since I was 14. I'm 27 now, like it's, it's a long, big chunk of my life, like just sticking to just one thing. Just started DJing really at like 11. Just, and then wanted to take it to the next level of like, there weren't enough stuff what I wanted and it wasn't as dark as I wanted it to be. I can't really see how people can call me a bandwagon jumper when I've sort of owned my own bandwagon for fucking for so long, you know? It's like, it's not an easy thing for me to do what I've done. I've never jumped bandwagon, like, I've never been that guy. This is this is a conscious conscious decision for for my creativity and, and for what I want to do. It was, I started to find inspiration from, from the sort of UK bass slash house movement um, at the time. Like, I've always bought house records, so I'm, I'm from UK Garage, House and Garage, so it was just an obvious, obvious thing, like, it felt natural, let's say, rather than obvious, it just felt natural. Um, and yeah, I've been, been extremely happy. About two, about two and a half years, it's sort of the thoughts that it turns in my head. It was when I was working a lot with um, a duo called Instrumental, who one half is now Bodica. And I was working in the studio of them a lot, and Dee Bridge, the drum and bass producer. And they started to, to they would stop sort of making drum and bass, and, and they all sort of slowly started to do their own thing. And, and Bodica, who's now massive, um, he was like messing with sort of techno stuff and house stuff. And it was like, on a professional level, that was, it was then, because it was just the rawness that they was capturing. It was like a drastic change sort of from drum and bass to making techno, but you could still hear the influence and it was like, I was like, this is really cool. A mode selector asked me to do a one-off techno set about three years ago, two and a half years ago. And that was my first public sort of techno like set performance. And I loved it, I really enjoyed it. And it was, it seemed so interesting compared to what I'd been playing. Boiler Room, Tech South by Southwest. Um, it's been a crazy few days anyway. And we're gonna have some noise for everyone. The, the, the carnage is gonna go back at somebody's house. I'm coming back to one of your houses. Harboring a hangover of like four day partying, like literally being up for days. And I was just frustrated and just snapped really. I tried to incite a riot I think at one point. 
It's as funny as it is cringe -worthy. There's a whole new side of, of, of music that I haven't I haven't experienced or been a part of, which I'm really excited to be a part of. And and shows places that places and parties I haven't done before. It's, it's all new to me now. It's all new again and it's that's why it's so exciting. It's like it's all new experiences and it's, that's kind of what it's about. Like not just music but life, right? It's it's, it's seeing all, all things you haven't seen. And I'm currently doing it, so yeah. My future sounds like at the moment what I'm playing. House, techno, disco records. Mm -hmm.